<laughs> Let me ask you a question, Andrew. Tito Ortiz. How 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 old do you think Tito Ortiz is right now? Oh, that's weird because he's a he's a sports guy. So like when you hit 32, you're viewed as ancient, which like you have to apply a different. I'm going to guess that Tito Ortiz is probably in his early 40s, like 42. Is he still fighting? Sort of. He was the head of Oscar De La Hoya, did an MMA event with him and Chuck Liddell that was a disaster. I don't think he's fought since then. And it closed like it was such a bad event that it kind of bankrupted De La Hoya. Um, at least that's what he said. So he's yeah. sort of fighting, but not really. He used to be a politician. He went in largely off of Trump, and then he got thrown out after eight months for, I think he was Huntington Beach. I watched a 30-30, I believe it was, on that fight you're talking about with him and Chuck Liddell and what a, like, what a oh. money also was for them. Um, I looked it up. He's 47 years old. Okay. Oh, by okay. the way, uh, w- welcome to the F- Face Podcast, uh, Jeff, Gavin, Andrew. Uh, he's 47 years old, so he's actually the same age as me, which was shocking. But I, that, I was wondering, how old do you think Tito Ortiz would have to be? You're, how, you, what, you're your age right now, mm-hmm. which is what, 20, 26 or so? 28. 28, yeah. So you're 28 years old. Tito Ortiz is 47. There is no world when you put, there's no way in which we put you and Tito in a, in, Ortiz in a room together to fight that he doesn't kill you pretty quickly. Oh, right? murders me. Yeah, within a minute. But how old does he have to be before you've got a shot, do you think? <sighs> like, uh, could you, like, could a, you're 28, could a 60-year-old Tito Ortiz kick your ass? Probably. Uh, but could a 70-year-old no. Tito Ortiz kick your ass? I don't know. I don't think a six, because you need to put Tito, Tito Ortiz is an MMA fighter. So him at 60 is like 120. Like, his body is so fucked. I think I could do 60, but that is the cutoff. How old is Arnold Schwarzenegger? That's a great question. He's got to be 70. I guess like I'm 72. sure he could kick the piss out of Andrew still. I agree. I would do not. you think, yeah, w- at what age do you think you could beat up Arnold Schwarzenegger? He's 72 now. We all <laughs> agree he would beat your ass. He's uh, 75. He's 75. 75. Ooh. Jesus. <laughs> I would say 85. I, do I you feel think, confident. Do you think because your back is longer, it has more chance of breaking? Mm-mm. That's an interesting question. If I'm on the bottom, I'm, I'm doing bottom control. I don't know. That'd be <laughs> tough. Of, what do you mean the bottom? Oh, I'm saying like if he takes me down, right, then he, if you're looking for UFC. like submissions. Yeah, I'm thinking like <laughs> mixed <laughs> martial arts, like jujitsu. Right. I don't know if having a long back is a disadvantage because I don't have long legs. That definitely is what you want. You're open up for triangles and sweeps. And Nick's got a good point. You'd have to uh, break his punches. Block the punches with your nose. That's true. That frees up my hands. You've got a secret <laughs> weapon. Do you think his do you think his wrist and fist will break before your nose does? Because maybe that's a tactic right there. I think you just I think you just unlocked this. It's not at what age can I beat up Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's at what age will his body disintegrate trying to fight me? It's, <laughs> it's really not about me. It's we're waiting for the point in which he will just crumble at any movement. That's what I need. Disintegrate. Oh. <laughs> Well, if you, uh, audience member, if you have uh, access to Arnold Schwarzenegger or Tito Ortiz uh, and are interested in having either of them fight Andrew at some point in their geriatric days, let us know. See if you can help facilitate this. 85-year-old Arnold Schwarzenegger versus Andrew, I would pay 100 bucks to see that. I, I feel like the Schwarzenegger thing is so out of the realm of possibility, but I worry... Because the Tito Ortiz thing no, it's feels very like it, possible. Yeah, it feels like it, Tito Ortiz. It feels 100%. like for fifteen hundred dollars and just being in the same place he is, you could get Tito Ortiz to fight someone. All right, yeah, but we're not for thirteen more years. He's only forty. He's got to hit sixty. That's the. Can I read my that was the favorite cutoff. Tito Ortiz nonsensical quote? Like this is yeah. trash talk that he did. This is this is word for word what he said. Jealous of him? This guy can't even put a fucking sentence together, man. You kidding me right now? He's reaching for he's reaching for those grapes. He's trying to make his wine, and the wine is already singing, sounding like violin with that cheese and that wine. We'll see you on November twenty fourth. What the <laughs> fuck does that mean? What, what was the wine in that, that analogy? What I don't he- know. <laughs> and you should hear him do it because it's so much slower and like him trying to pro. Like it's just it's a mess. He's a mess. Like by he, it sounded like he was trying to say that he couldn't make the wine, but the wine was already I, singing. Yeah, I feel like he mixed so many metaphors at once, and like he's trying to do a <laughs> violin thing. It's just it's a disaster of a clip. 
you know how they refer to people as punch drunk? I and mean, like if you get yes. it, it's it's essentially, I guess, CTE, right? It's kind of what yes. we were talking about with Antonio Brown earlier. It's uh you just get hit enough times in your life that you're just loopy from then on out. Yeah. Uh, tra- traumatic brain damage. Yeah. But do you wonder if it's like, oh, they just got hit in the head so many times they're slow? Or do you think a person can only can get punched so many times that they're just always ready for a punch? And any time they're taught, like, like maybe he's not mentally slow. Maybe he just speaks slowly because he's just like always on guard. <laughs> he's just like he's, he's like for the rest of his life, he's going to be waiting for a punch to come at any moment in his life. You know what I mean? Do you think so? Or do you think it's the other way when if you know how to fight, you're not as worried about it? Like, if somebody tries know, to make a move, you have a confidence that, like, oh, I'll deal with them. It's no problem. I definitely, I definitely went into my fifth root canal a different man than I went into my second. <laughs> I'll say that. Because you did experience. Yeah, so it's like. Because I'd had a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> so you do learn to take a punch. Well, how many times, Jeff, how many times have people punched you in the head or face? In my life? Because uh, you, didn't you get, uh, like, a, a fist to straight down on the top of your head once? <laughs> what? Oh, I got I oh when that the fester. <laughs> it was yeah, when, I can never. I always get mixed up between fester and porch. <laughs> I got hit on the head by fester. I ran from. Well, I ran from both of them. I got hit on the head by fester because he caught me. Uh, <laughs> I did not get caught by porch. <laughs> Dude, it's bad enough to get whopped on the head like a cartoon by a guy named Fester. Uh, you do not want to hit get hit by a guy named Porch. A guy named Porch has the name Porch for very specific reason. I, yeah, that's a great name. You don't want to fuck with Porch. Porch is like a, a background character in like Roadhouse is the vibe yeah. I get from Porch. Yeah, Porch is the he's the size of a literal Porch. Yeah, if, if my memory serves. Uh, I, I've probably been in, I, I, you know, it's funny because you brought up two fights I would completely forgotten about and I wouldn't have counted. Gavin, uh, I've probably been in 10, 12 fights in my life, maybe. Maybe, maybe where a few you more. got hit? Where I got hit, yeah. And were the early ones a lot worse than the, the later ones? Uh, all fights suck in the exact same way to me. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, I never, I never suffered catastrophic injuries. I never got like, I got jumped in the army once by a 13 Marines. I think I've told that story maybe on other podcasts. Did you get uh, like soap in the socked? Like what was going on? No, I never got I never got that. So what happened? Oh. What so what had happened was what happened was uh I was at a place called the Defense Information School in the Army. It was in Fort Benjamin <laughs> Harrison, Indiana. It's no longer there. It moved to uh Fort it, Maryland. Not that it matters. But if you're from Indiana and you're like, I've never heard of Fort Ben Harrison and I live in Indianapolis, it's because it's gone. But it used to be there and I was there. Uh and so that school <laughs> It was a, it was a joint school, so it it means it was a it was a rarity in the military. They mean it means it was a journalism school, right? Journalism and broadcast school. Uh, so they taught all soldiers, Marines, Air Force, Navy, and Coast Guard the same curriculum. So they were mixed classes. So I had classes with Marines and Air Force and all those guys and girls. Uh, and it was one of the only schools in the army like that. And so we shared barracks. And my like the army boys were on the first floor and then the Marines had the second floor. And then I want to say the Air Force had the. The Marines and the Air Force, I want and then and the Navy maybe had the third floor. And then I think the Air Force had their own accommodations because they were so fucking fancy. Uh, and then the fourth floor was like the army ladies and then maybe some other uh, ladies from other uh, other branches, too. I think it might have just been like the ladies floor. Uh, so anyway, one what would happen when you were c- called short time, which is when you're graduating and you're you're moving off uh, to go start your duty somewhere once you graduate your school, uh, assuming you didn't wash out like most people, uh, you there were traditions you would do. Like one of the traditions was the you would take buckets of water and you would run around to the other people that were in the class before you and you would throw the water under their door and like flood their bedroom. So I was doing that one night because as because I passed the goddamn journalism school and it was my right to do it because I spent six fucking months at that school and I absolutely deserve to throw the water under the door like everybody else got to do with the history of the defense information school. Uh, but it's suddenly a big fucking deal when Jeff does it. Uh, it was a big deal because I went on the wrong floor. I did it on the Marine floor. And Ooh. the problem was... The Marines who went to the journalism school weren't the only Marines there. There were also Marines who did other jobs. I think these guys worked for, like, the Marine post office or something, <laughs> uh, honestly. And uh, don't fuck with the Marine post office. Uh, 
And so they there was a batch of dudes that had just been there for like a they had just processed in. So they'd been there like four or five days. They didn't know what the fuck was going on. They didn't know the rules of the land. So when some hundred and forty pound, six foot tall, scrawny soldier is running <laughs> gleefully down their hallway, screaming and laughing and giggling and filling up a water bucket in a in a water fountain and then throwing it under people's doors. Uh, they didn't have a sense of humor for that. And so about it was 13 of them. I remember uh, grabbed me and they punched me around a little bit. But what really hurt was they threw me down a flight of stairs. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then when I got to the when I hit the ground, I was going like backwards in slow motion and I, they were looking at me. And by the time I hit the ground, they also went down the stairs to continue to kick me. <laughs> and then eventually <laughs> I remember thinking like, well, at least I'm falling away from them. And then by the time I hit the ground, I was like, oh, and I knocked my breath out. And I was like, oh, why are their boots still here? Uh, <laughs> but uh, very, very quickly after that, uh, somebody came and broke it up before I got seriously hurt. That was the closest I ever got to getting like really damaged in a fight. I just I can't stop thinking about how want, like needing to call for help at defense information is like yeah. the worst location. There's yeah. no em more embarrassing place to be than to need help. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> Not only that, but you know that thing where you're doing something with your friends and then you turn around and all you, your friends are gone, <laughs> like just completely gone. They're just like little clouds of smoke where they used to be. And suddenly it's you versus the entire <laughs> United States Marine Corps. Yeah. Well, United States Marine Post Office Corps. It's a very <laughs> specific. Yeah. I could be misremembering that, but I think I think that's what it was. I think they were going to like a postal training or something. <laughs> they were definitely they definitely went postal on me. God damn. Uh, how about you, Gav? Getting uh, smacked in the head. Yeah. How many times have you been hit in a fight? Uh, I mean, no, no serious fights. Like we had like friend fights where I got punched. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Uh, yeah, but nothing that like rocked me. Yeah. I think my most of my head injuries have just been like standing up in a cupboard to fast and stuff like that. <laughs> you never got you never got like just in a fight at lunch at school with some other kid who was just like i don't know i'm just gonna try to use some british slang but i don't have any is that some price i got some some dude who was it was a proper wanker no i got i got bundled. some, some chav who was uh, giving you uh the bad stuff yeah What's like bundled? a big like a big dog pile but it but you know on to a scale where like the whole school comes oh yeah 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 you try to throw a bucket Probably of water under, under the under door, a... or what did you do? How did this result in you being the, the sole target? Uh, well, usually it was it started when like people would be playing football at lunch, and all the all the backpacks would be in a big pile, and sometimes you would just get chucked in, into the middle, and then the person <laughs> who chucked you <laughs> shouts "bundle," everyone stops playing football, uh -oh. people come running out of buildings <laughs> and swarming the field, and suddenly you're trying to get out of there before too many people land on you. But sometimes. You know, you got like 17 people on top and you're just, you're like, and you're like trying to push people out of the way. And then you take a knee to the head and then you just have to go fetal until it subsides. Yeah. I had a few of those. That's a great game. They were always fun though. It was always, it was always like really epic and scary to see like 50 to 60 kids running towards you about to die on you. I remember watching my friend, happened to my friend once and he, he tried to get out early. Like he, it was pre- the bundle call hadn't been cool, but he knew it was coming. So he was just like leaping over all the bags. He'd somehow ended up in the middle, but he got his ankle like hooked on someone's strap. And he was just really strong. It was like he was in quicksand of bags. And then suddenly like people started coming in from the sides. It was like a zombie movie. And he, he was somehow able to stay on top. Like someone would dive on him, but he would like angle himself and just ended up just stepping on them. So he was getting like higher and higher as the bundle was growing. But in the end, he just succumbed and he was like, Probably on top of five people, but five people on top. It was, and I was just watching. Like I refused to bundle on my own friend, but uh, I did, I also didn't help him, and I <laughs> I watched it. It looked, just looked so cool. How often did bundles occur? Like, was this every day someone would get? Oh bundled? no, this was probably maybe once a month would be a significant <laughs> like you know Major approaching a hundred people bundle. At my oh thoughts. Jesus. I don't yeah, and it was always just, <laughs> just always all the blokes. Like girls wouldn't get involved, so it, you'd end up with just a load of girls just stood on their own while everyone was bundling. <laughs> do you think? Uh, do you think they still bundle to this day at that school? I hope so. Like it wasn't a tradition you started; mm. you inherited it, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's how most school stuff goes. You, yeah. you can also get grundened. What's, What's that? that? Uh, it's just like the. Uh, it's like a dumpster on wheels. Okay. You just get lobbed in one of those. Oh, okay. that's less. Fun. But yeah, another inherited tradition. How about you, Andrew? I have you. I assume you've bit. You've 
have you been kicked by as many kids as you've kicked in your life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, because it's zero. The number is zero on both fronts. So yeah, that's that's a factual factual statement, Jeff. I haven't kicked anybody. I don't okay. think I've ever been kicked. Punched in the head? Yeah, not really. Like not, no great stories relating to it. Definitely I just haven't. Don't been know bundled. how you have this indestructible nose when it's just never been tested. It's just you can you can kind of sense it. And here's the thing, <laughs> yeah. like. My head is so big, it's going to get hit if I was in a fight. There's just no way around it. It's, it's uh, an absolute <laughs> thing. But I've avoided it for the most part. I don't ever want to hear about you getting hit by anyone for any reason. Yeah, I don't. It hasn't happened in a long time. Good. I had one. I, I wish I had like a fun school story with Gavin or like a good school fight. It was like a kid punched me once and I said, why? And then they walked <laughs> away. And that was it. That was my big <laughs> school brawl. Why did you do that? Uh, they had no response. They're just like, I'm angry. And then they left. Zero I, excitement. I used to get I used to get popped from time to time just from my mouth. I used to have a real smart mouth mm. when I was in high school. I had a real I had a real problem with being sarcastic. I'm glad that <laughs> went away. Oh, wow, dude, it's you know, so much better than it was. <laughs> Should we talk about what we did yesterday? Yeah, hold on. Before we do though, can we talk about this Antonio Brown tweet that Eric sent us? While we're kind of on the subject of getting hit uh, and talking about sportsy stuff. Of course. I'm, I'll just read it. Eric sent this to us right as we were starting the pleasantries, Gavin. Antonio Brown, if you don't know him, he's a, he's a wide receiver uh, in fo- uh, the NFL football. He's a famous one. He played for a lot of teams. Uh, was considered really, really talented, but also kind of like a loose cannon. Um, so here's the quote he wrote uh, on his Twitter. My biggest regret in my career doesn't involve calling my GM a cracker or showing up to the Raiders camp late in a hot air balloon with frozen feet, or throwing (laughs) rocks at that UPS driver, and it definitely doesn't involve me taking my shirt off and doing a victory lap around the Jets stadium mid-game while throwing up deuces. That's how he ended his career in the NFL, by the way. That was last year. My biggest regret is that I'll never get to see me, Antonio Brown, play a game live. Sure, I can watch the game afterwards, but I can't imagine what that was like for you all to see something like that. (laughs) Like watching the Beatles or Jesus perform at Red Rocks. Antonio Brown on his biggest regret. <laughs> he, compared him, he compared seeing him play football to watching Jesus perform live at Red Rocks. That's such a Kanye mindset. It is. Yeah. yeah. And there's things he's, I mean, uh. there are other scandals that he is part of that he did not decide to mention. Um, he, he's had quite the career over the last yeah, few well, years. He, there's only so many characters on Twitter. That's true. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we, we should absolutely talk about what we did yesterday, Gavin. And uh, I, I'm actually glad to talk about it because I was I told you guys I would have a uh, a prototype of a of a fruit glove for this week. And I don't. <laughs> and I and I and the reason I don't is because of what we did yesterday. Can I just say somebody who wasn't part of what happened, but has seen images of it. It is it looked like it was an incredible time. And I don't exactly know what was going on with Gavin, but it appeared to be like <laughs> some form of torture device is how I describe it. Like if somebody tried to make an ironing board, a torture device is sort of what I, I was able to see. But it looked like a lot of fun. Yeah, I definitely felt like I was on some sort of rack. I, well, technically you were. I <laughs> wish we could release the images that Andrew's talking about on the on social, but Eric says we should hold on to them because he doesn't want to give stuff away. Yeah, uh, we should. He, we should wait to to actually release the images. What if we blur ninety percent of it? Okay, what, if you want to, <laughs> Gavin, Gavin, if you want to blur ninety percent of the image, well, I said we. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we is you. So yeah, you can go nuts. No, we I just is want, the team. I want to know what the ten percent would be. What would you like them to see? And the ninety percent rule. What's getting eliminated? Like, <laughs> there's a, there's, the edges, an, but. <laughs> there's an image that's so disturbing and so funny. I had it sent. I had Eric send it to me last night, and I was showing it to Emily. And it's so funny. Gavin says that because the first thing she said, she was like, "You got to show that to everybody." And I was like, "We can't." Eric doesn't want to. Uh, and she goes, maybe you could blur everything and just that be the point of the image. Is that Emily just, said that? Yeah, she said it last night to me, almost in oh, verbatim to what you said. It's amazing. Yeah. So uh, you two are thinking alike. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I, I am in so much pain. <laughs> are you really? So what? All right. All right so I don't want to hold the audience in suspense any longer. So what he's referring to is yesterday. We filmed episodes one and two uh, of the of the show that we've been talking about, our video show that we've been talking about for a while now. I pitched it about a year ago internally called Does It Do? 
It's a it's a in infomercial docu series reality show where uh, we go in and we we test the efficacy of as seen on TV products to determine if they are right for you or not. Uh, and we've been talking about doing it for like a year. We've mentioned it on this show a few times, not too much, because uh, I don't know when we were ever going to make it. But we made one and two yesterday. And all we're doing, might I add, is we're just we're just testing. We're just doing like A/B testing for as seen on TV products. So why would you be sore? I think I broke my hand and my ass <laughs> in two in two different incidents. Dude, I'll be honest, man. I didn't want to turn around when I heard you hit the ground. <laughs> when we, when we, were, we were, you know, we were sprinting. For a thing, for a test, and Gavin immediately hit the ground, <laughs> and it sounded it sounded like if you take a side of beef, like you go into one of those uh, like meat trucks and you get like half a cow. It sounded like if you held it about seven feet above the ground and just dropped it and let that meat slap against the ground. That's what it sounded like when you hit the ground. And it wasn't even like a good. It wasn't like it looked good. Like I went through a bunch of stuff mm. and it looked all cinematic. I just slipped onto my ass. So yeah. it's like all the pain, but without anything that looked any good. And it was all because I was trying to push Jeff through the set. <laughs> we Gavin wiped out so many times while we were doing this. And Jeff, I don't think watched him do it. I watched it every time and grimaced like, oh, we're going to have to like take Gavin to the hospital. There was oh. one where he fell and just laid there holding his wrist. And I went, his wrist oh. is broken. <laughs> There's no way his wrist is not broken. It was bad. It was fucking bad. I got out of the, the Uber after I got home, and I was just like, oh, I just feel like I've been beaten up. It was like a post-bundle feeling. <laughs> you got it's just because I'm, I'm, I'm just feeling my age, I think. Like, slipping onto my ass, I've probably done maybe 50 times in my life. But now it's like, it's really registering to the point where I'm like getting up and sitting down with groans because mm -hmm. it hurts. Yeah, your body becomes a grown tube when you hit about 35. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I have grown tubed every time I've stood up or sat down uh, for the first time of the day for like the last seven years of my life, probably. <laughs> oh. Now I'm just picturing the grape lady as like a pallet of spilling <laughs> grown tubes. <laughs> oh, man. Grape lady came up the other day at home for some reason even though everybody has seen it her a million times. And Emily and I still sat down and rewatched The Grape Lady probably 20 times in a row. It never stops being funny. It's a great she the, She's the gift that keeps on giving, man. That, there's a sound that comes from people that's it's so, it's from so deep within when they're really yes. hurt. Like you watch someone like fall off a roof and get winded mm -hmm. and it's, it's not like a scream. It's just like a, uh, it's just so, you can't replicate it. I think yeah, that's like what the grape lady so did. Good. Yeah, it's, it's the, like the, the grape lady, the grapes pierced her to her core. Like that is <laughs> the <laughs> deepest pain that we have heard, and it was because of grapes. It is intense, <laughs> deep, guttural pain. Yeah, <laughs> the wine was singing. Like, if, oh my god! <laughs> it's like if you needed a sound effect for death. That's what it. It's like it's just the most pain <laughs> and not wanting to exist. It's terrible. <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, but I think it went really well. Uh, I don't know how Gavin and Eric feel, but um, uh, it was it was a little hard because I, I was telling this uh, to some other people yesterday. I, I initially wrote down the pitch for the show and developed the one sheet for it like over a year ago. And I haven't thought about it much since then in terms of like sitting down and actually making the show because you know, like, I, already, <laughs> I already came up with the idea a year ago. It's in my head somewhere. Right. And so yesterday when we sat down to finally make it, I was like, fuck, how long has it been since I looked at this? information <laughs> i think I know, like, you said i don't really remember what this is <laughs> yeah i had to sit down and re-familiarize myself luckily eric had to run a show which helped a lot um uh he did some awesome producing but uh yeah i think we're gonna film an eight episode season and we filmed right. two but we can't film any more for like a month <laughs> because gavin's got schedule problems so eric oh, when do you think it'll come out uh i think that the first episode will pro honestly if i can get an editor on this, which is with our bandwidth tough. Uh, I think we could get something out. Ah, man, this episode comes out on like the 24th. I bet I could get something out next week. Like, wow, like, that would be insane. In terms of like by the end of August, I'd like to have one episode out. And I know that might drag because it's one episode, then a second episode, probably like the following week. And then who knows when we can do the rest. Mm -hmm. But 
I'd rather have something out and have people yeah. watch and give us some feedback to see if they enjoy it. And then really like, let's film like 10 in a day. I'd yeah, we love to just do like ten. They are so fun. They were so fun to do. I would love to do like ten in a day. You're gonna kill to Gavin. Like a- yeah. Yeah. yeah, Gavin will die. Chiropractor yeah. afterwards. Yeah. I haven't tried. And for the record, I didn't try to hurt Gavin at all. 100. percent no, this period. is not on Jeff. No, oh, yeah. Any, yeah. Absolutely was, on Gavin. It was yeah. all me. Every yeah. single injury I took, and I didn't even expect to do any sort of stunt the entire day. It just kept happening. I mean. It was in every single thing that happened to you is my fault. Well, you said you're trying to shove Jeff through the set. So like, it's, I would, it's yeah. definitely, it's undeniably <laughs> on Because I decided we should do a race at one point. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It was oh. Gavin saying we should do a race. And then Jeff just keeps going, what? What do you mean? <laughs> How do we race? What do you mean? And then Gavin just going, go, ready, go, go, ready, go. It was great. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't want to hype it up. It wasn't like a, it was it was very goofy. Was yeah, very this goofy isn't going to be like, this isn't like, this isn't some big Rooster Teeth first production no. that we spent uh, tons of money on and it's going to be like a 30 minute episode. I think the episodes are probably eight or nine minutes. Yeah. Maybe and 10. Then, remember, think f- face. It's very dumb. But, but I will say this, the set that I had in my head, Eric captured perfectly. And that I was, was, I mean, it was like a one for one perfect set i was I so happy in. with like the color palette and our design team michelle sontag in design with that does it do logo like oh it's perfect oh it's it, nailed it like just it's a uh, it. it's a shame you messed up the costume i didn't mess up the costume <laughs> the, hey hey gavin yeah i got the right size for you you fit perfectly <laughs> in that shirt it's, what wasn't what i asked for you said extra medium. What that's you, large. That's why you asked for it doesn't exist, dickhead. Wait. I'm going to defend Eric here. If somebody tells you what their shirt size is extra medium, what are you going to buy them? Large. No. That's yeah. not how extra large. works. Yeah, even Nick. <laughs> even no. Nick. Nope. Nope. Because with yeah. small, extra Andrew. small is smaller than small. With large. Wait, what's extra ex- large? Extra large is larger than large. Right. So, <laughs> so extra I- medium. You're I've playing never heard large. Only one. You're the playing only one. The <laughs> only one that's extra being small. There's one. The rest are bigger. No, extra medium <laughs> could not be more medium. It's like absolutely straight in the middle medium. That's medium. You're describing medium. <laughs> I know. I actually, that's I actually, what I asked for. I actually, when, before Gavin got there, Eric had the costumes laid out, and I went over to see which one was mine, and they were both the exact same waist and the exact same shirt size. I looked at Eric, and I was like, Gavin's not going to be happy if he finds out he and I are the same size now. I was like, man, things must be going rough. I wrote extra medium as a small slack joke, and you took that to mean large. And I just don't think that's what extra medium means. Well, I, I just, I don't know how you defend that. Fuck this. Yeah, I, don't, I really don't. I'm with you, Eric. Fuck this. Oh, but I'm with Eric too. I was. Uh... <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what are you but I just what? To be an also, I just thought you know, I, I just still end up with a medium. I can see your confusion. <laughs> Why would you end up with a medium? You told me a different size. Extra medium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, How can you agree with me and still argue your point? <laughs> Jesus I mean, it's God. not what I would have bought, but I can see why you did. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Taking care of yourself and finding ways to support your mental health is so important. I personally recently took a little break to recharge and it has really helped me feel more refreshed. Other things I do sometimes to help with my mental health is listen to music or have a relaxing bath, but there's also BetterHelp Online Therapy. I've had to sort through all kinds of issues through therapy, and it has been incredibly helpful to me. It has helped me within that moment as well as given me tools to help process certain issues when they arise. So I personally would always highly recommend trying therapy. BetterHelp offers a variety of ways to communicate on their platform, whether it be video, audio only, or even live chat, so you're comfortable in whatever environment works best for you. It's less expensive than in-person therapy, and they're able to match you quickly within a couple of days with a therapist. So if you want to try BetterHelp, 
Our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash face. That's BetterHelp.com slash face. This message is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Going online without ExpressVPN is like changing while leaving your windows wide open. You might not have anything to hide, but why give random creeps a chance to invade your privacy? Everybody should use a VPN because it protects your privacy from ISPs and prevents them from gathering personal data, which they sell. ExpressVPN is particularly great because it ensures your privacy while also being incredibly easy to use and is accessible across countless devices. I personally love using it because it safely and reliably allows me to access streaming content libraries in other regions. Without ExpressVPN, I wouldn't have been able to watch the Spelling Bee this year, and that's one of my favorite yearly events. So secure your online activity by visiting expressvpn.com slash face today. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S V-P-N dot com slash face. And you can get an extra three months free at expressvpn.com slash face. It's summer. Lighten up. Dad grass is great anytime. They can help you chill out before a big meeting or be a new replacement to that evening glass of wine. They're the perfect pairing to everything summer has to offer. Dadgrass is legal, organic hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Dadgrass CBD products are made with 100% organic hemp that's easy to dose and the effects come on smooth. They offer a variety of products from their token smokable pre-rolled joints, as well as hemp flour and a variety of CBD tincture drops. Enjoy the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. All Dadgrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. So go to dadgrass.com slash face to check out their products. Whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, Dadgrass will leave you in a euphoric mood. Right now, Dadgrass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash face. Go to dadgrass.com slash face for 20% off your first order. That's dadgrass.com slash face. Oh, man. Do you guys know what today is? What is today? Uh, today is... Well, I'll let... It, now, you know what? He's not going to guess anything useful. Is it the uh, end of the redemption year? No, I think that happened already. That, that uh, happened? This, this is uh, the final day that I'm uh, of my, uh, my, my bike ride banning because of the vasectomy. Tomorrow, as oh! of tomorrow, I can ride my bike again. That's exciting. And how's your scrot rot? The jock itch is under control. Yeah, I mean, it's still there. It's still discolored, but they, you know, they say that that's normal and it'll still be there for up to eight weeks. But uh, I'm taking the pills. I'm like a week into like uh, two weeks of antibiotics or whatever, and they gave me a much bigger tube of cream. And that's, so I'm in, <laughs> I'm in no pain, but I'm still daily applying jock itch cream and taking a jock itch pill every day. So I'm still, I'm still, wow. I'm still just focused on dick health. Uh, dick area health <laughs> every day of my life as I have been for what seems like six weeks straight. Yeah, so, so this will be yeah at more than six weeks straight now. I can't, and you've never had this issue before, and now it's just no. it's part of your life. This is and it's future. like it 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 just it perfectly framed my vasectomy. I got it two weeks before <laughs> it went away for the vasectomy. As soon as the vasectomy started to wean off the vasectomy, it came back. Yeah, is it it's one of like those a, things where once you get it, you're more prone to getting it again later? Or is I don't it think just so. like you've been, I think it just, just had a terrible run. I think I just had a bad run and I think it didn't totally go away, you know? Ah, and I okay. remember like the the dude when I the pharmacist, I think I said this last time, the pharmacist did tell me when I got my pills and stuff, he was like, You might need more than this. These things are persistent. And I was like, Shut up, dude. Uh, <laughs> so I'll I'll be apologizing to him if I see him again. So is it just mainly around the front? Like it, it didn't work its way behind. You didn't get like athletes. Like in the oh, in the question. athletes anus? Yeah. Uh, no, no. It's just it's just like on my thigh. My right thigh. Ugh. And then up a little bit, um, kind of like where the waistband is, would go around your pants, kind of like yeah. uh, in two spots. Like, yeah. Up That's, there as well. So just in like sweat locked areas. I guess so, yeah. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually wondering because I had been uh, not wearing the, my, my bog standard swim trunks this year, you know, mm-hmm. the ones that I had like eight pairs of that I was just only wearing. I decided yeah. to mix it up a little bit this year. So I've been wearing a bunch of different shorts. And I'm wondering if maybe I just am disagreeing with a fabric, but uh, be clearly it's the jock itch, so no, it's probably not it. Yeah. Well, at least it's not spreading. It sounds like there's not anymore. a cutoff. Yeah. yeah. 
You've hit hit, hit a cap of it. I think I'm on the back nine. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I did some homework. Oh shit! Did you do What'd you do? Uh, I watched Hands on a Hard Body. Oh, oh, that's great. And when I got to the credits, I noticed a very special name in there. Arnold Vosloo. Oh, uh, Matthew McConaughey. Arnold freaking Vosloo. I told you. What does he have to do with that? I have no idea. My brain still rejects that that's not Billy Zane. I really have an issue with that every time. Every time I see him as the mummy, I, my brain just goes, <laughs> Why do you Zane? think that's Billy Zane? <laughs> I didn't. Hey, hey, Andrew, <laughs> until right now, I thought that was Billy Zane. Yeah. You thought it, Billy Zane was Imhotep? Absolutely. Yeah. We've no. talked about this on the show. I had this, yes. that discovery like a year ago. I've spent no, most of my life here. thinking that Imhotep is Billy Zane. What? I didn't know that. I mean, I guess they got the same. They both have face like, dark head. eyes. <laughs> <laughs> they. Same face and head. <laughs> I think Arnold Vosloo is from South Africa or something. I, I didn't even know his name. That will always just be Billy Zane to me. That's crazy. <laughs> I wonder what he would... Like McConaughey it could be a different sense. Arnold Vosloo, but you, that's a mm, hell of a name. That is. There's that'd the, be quite many, the coincidence. How many, yeah, how many Donald Vosloo's in film are there? Arnold Vosloo. <laughs> I don't know. God damn it. Yeah, I, I'm looking at IMDb and he's that's Arnold Vosloo that's listed there as a special thanks. Okay. I'm so trying to say you're, wow. you're seeing that those two dudes look alike. <laughs> yes. yes. You're telling me. Yeah. You're they telling me that insane. those two those two <laughs> those two I don't know how old twins look alike. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how you can't. I don't know what you don't see. They look the exact same. No, I get it. And those two, they definitely look alike. I never made the connection until this moment, but you're right. They look. I always very think similar. of Billy Zane with hair. I think that's the thing. I always I think of Billy that. Zane like in Twin Peaks. See, I think I've just missed hair Billy Zane. I don't think I've seen a lot of Zane movies. I haven't seen Titanic. I didn't see Twin Peaks. My only point of reference for Billy Zane is not a Billy Zane movie. Yeah, me too, Jeff. You know what it is? It's it's a Billy Corgan. Like hair, no hair, smashing pumpkins thing. Ah, like, Billy Corgan. I don't think a lot of people have seen Billy Corgan with hair, and yeah, I so think that's I, what we're dealing with here. I think you're right. I think you're right. So you thought Imhotep was running around the Titanic? Well, I didn't know. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, when I heard Billy Zane was in the Titanic, my brain went, "Oh wow, he's in that too." Yeah, because I've never huh. seen the Titanic, so it's not like I watched it. Was like Imhotep is doing shit, but <laughs> just the knowledge. I always thought Billy Zane was a bit Elvisy. Like I always thought, like he could have done like Elvis in a biopic. I could see that in the the photo that Gavin posted. I'm assuming that's hair, Titanic, yeah. or is that what is that? That's Twin Peaks. Twin, Twin Peaks. Peaks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I could see it. I could see some Elvis there. What did you think of Hands on a Hard Body, Gavin? Oh, I thought it was great, and that it's guy fantastic. you were describing was phenomenal. Oh, the guy, with the, the, the <laughs> yeah. air conditioner guy. Oh, it's one of my favorite scenes from any movie ever. It's a great monologue. The genuine, it's like an office moment, the way he pivots to genuine fear about talking about his house going 50 below zero. <laughs> it's great. It just builds so nicely. I mean, not to spoil anything, but like the reasons why certain people get eliminated is so perfect for their character that like you couldn't script it better. It's I'll be honest amazing. though, for a documentary about a subject, they sure as shit didn't film a lot of stuff that happened. No, it's mainly character interviews, I want to say, right? I haven't seen it in a long time, but it's a lot of like them away from the truck talking. I wonder how they even would have shot that because they didn't have much time beyond the truck. I wonder if all those interviews are post competition and then just. Uh, that's a good question. It. I yeah, never I really thought know. about like logistically how they would have captured those moments. I think they were grabbing stuff as it went on, like in the breaks a lot. That'd be wild. The like 10 of your 15 minutes spent talking about the things that are currently happening. <laughs> it's such a weird. Did you also watch American Movie or just Hands on a Hard Body? I've still got to watch American Movie. I think you'll like American Movie even better. Hands on a Hard Body is pretty fucking great movie. They're both great. I just, it's, I, you get more of a deep dive into the characters in uh, American Movie. You get, like, y you get more time with them, I'll say, and you get more invested mm. in their lives, which I think helps. And you Who's really, in the credits, though? That, that's a great... That's a great <laughs> credits for... For an American movie. Hopefully Arnold Vosloo. Or at least Billy Zane. Yeah. Oh, that didn't help at all. <laughs> did you look up? <laughs> I look qu credits for an American movie. That didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Google. Google didn't think that was specific enough. 
<laughs> Never mind. Lots of uh, yeah. lots of feedback about our cereal discussion from the comment leavers. Lots of uh, we really opened yeah. up some cultural doors there. And apparently, ricicles are, are just like like what a frosted flake is to a cornflake. Oh, it's really? Like a sugared frosted uh, rice crispy. But a lot of people I... saying they've never seen them, so I think maybe they're done. That sounds good though. Like adding more sugar to Rice Krispies, I don't see why that would be a bad thing. No, that would be great. Maybe I had... they sell some on eBay or something. <laughs> Get an old box. <laughs> like how expired um, would you eat cereal? Oh, uh, pretty expired. Uh, yeah, pretty expired. It also depends on the cereal. Like what ingredients are, are in it or on it. Largely on it. I wouldn't want to do something uh, that was like marshmallow centric, like Lucky Charms. That'd be tough. But Amazon... Time. Does not have ricicles cereal. I tried cinnamon toast crunch for the first time in my life, like five days ago, four days ago. I cannot believe that that's a cereal. It is great. It's delicious, but it's just sugar. It's just cinnamon sugar in a bag with texture. I couldn't believe how <laughs> sugary it was. You know what's weird? I fucking love cinnamon and I love sugar and I love cereal, but I don't like cinnamon toast crunch. I know really? I'm in an ex extreme minority. But I just something about it doesn't doesn't go together for me. That's so interesting because to me wow. it just tastes like a, a cinnamon treat you would get. I know. I like I, it, there's no difference to me. So that's fascinating. I wonder what I think it I is. I just don't associate cinnamon with breakfast. Maybe I don't, I don't know what. That's it is. totally fair because it was jarring to eat it. I could not imagine having this as like a breakfast start to my day. It's yeah. a dessert. It's a great dessert. The, uh, the audience uh, also seems very keen on the idea of us doing some sort of a supplemental cereal tasting thing. Uh, so I guess we should probably do that at some point. Maybe we, could do, maybe we could do that during... Maybe we could all have cereal to kick off our office day. Ooh. Yeah, but Andrew can't get involved. He yeah, can eat cereal from fucking Canada. But that's what? I'm just going to eat my own cereal? Isn't the whole point that you're going to have cereals that you haven't had before? Well, yeah, we'll just mail them to each other and stuff. Okay. Well, that's, well, that's a different conversation. I'm on board. Well, I'm just that. saying, I think we need to follow through. It's, I, I think this is one of those things we shouldn't let dangle. No, I agree. Then... But we also have the chips. I'm excited about the chip off. Let's get the chip off going. Then we can do the cereal. Yeah, stuff's really backing up. That's good, you get, you, you, well, no, it's it's good. because he won't leave Canada, for, for Christ's sake. That's true, I, I said I wanted to leave. It's very clear. Wait, that's when? That's also true. November. Vegas in November. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to Vegas in November. Oh, no, but I said that's when I'd go. Have you I ever said that publicly, it. Eric? Like, do we announce that? I think we kind of For did. some reason, we're not doing that now? Yeah, I, th yeah, I think we talked about it. Didn't we? I think I so. Know. Well, either way, we're that. not going to Vegas in November. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we did. Nick's right. We did. Did we? No, oh, I don't think we did. Okay, then we're announcing it here. <laughs> we're not going to Vegas in November. Well, th it doesn't look like it. Yeah. If I go what does to that Vegas? mean? We are I mean, not. I might, yeah, what, what does I that do? mean? I mean, yeah, we might, I might just go. go to Vegas in November. Just fucking That's go. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the show. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, it's probably not going to go. Oh, Nick, Nick, <laughs> why do you keep saying probably? <laughs> why do you keep putting things on it? Qualifiers or whatever. We're I not. mean, who, who can say anything definitively anymore in 2022? Everyone else got to do their live show. And we don't yeah. do ours. Well, yeah, we were going to. Yeah, it's because we were going to do ours. In June, and you guys went, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want, I don't want to do that in June. Well, and so we pushed it back. I don't think and now I we're not that. doing it. Well, so I, will, I will take ownership of the fact that I wanted November, that I pushed for November. This is not my fault. This, this is an insane to imply that this is in any way my fault. No, if, well, if we I, have done June, we would have done it. It would right. have happened. I will say this. It would have happened in June. <laughs> I'm, yeah, you son of yeah, a bitch. I don't really, I don't you really know how you're absolved. Like you changed me? the date. I don't know Are what you want. Are you kidding want. me? Are you kidding me? You're going to blame me for this? That's uh, outrageous. I thought, I thought we were pretty clear. Yeah. That's no, I mean, outrageous. Like had... I'm not going to get into why that's an outrageous <laughs> statement. That'd be unfair to me. But I don't think I'm the one that dropped the ball. I'll just say that. <laughs> Who dropped I'm not the, ball? the one. I'm not, I'm not getting into what's happening, but it's, you can't blame me. You said Eric dropped the ball? I'm not saying Eric dropped the ball at all. I'm just saying the ball may have been dropped and it wasn't me. Somewhere a ball is on the floor. I just don't know whose legs it's you in front of. You know who wouldn't have dropped that ball? Antonio Brown. If we would have had Antonio Brown, <laughs> Brown there'd be no worries. That ball, we would be in Vegas in November.
Hey, maybe we should, instead of whining about all this stuff we're not doing, let's focus on what we are doing. We're going to watch MVP2 tomorrow <laughs> morning. That's happening. I'm it's so monkey excited. morning. That's yeah. really, it's a monkey movie morning on Friday. That is really happening. Andrew, have you been working on your previously on? Uh, I wrote, so the problem is we were going to do this like five months ago, so I rewatched oh, MVP. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the date changed. You can't really blame me for yeah, that I'm one, not, so... I'm I really gotta think on what that is. You know, I guess I don't want to talk about who dropped the ball. Okay. I don't know what that was about. I'm just saying that ball like, on the feet people, in front. People were, were busy. We had to move it. So I took all these notes. And uh, so I have to go back and find my notes on the, the point by points on the movie. Okay. I, do you think it makes sense for me to record it independently? Or I feel like it would make more sense to just open with that. So people don't have to look for a secondary. I mean, what's the format? Are, we, are, we, are you explaining it? Do we get a nice slideshow? Like what happens? Oh, we get any I pictures? didn't even consider slideshow. No, I was just going to explain it. Ideally, it should be a PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Or uh, <laughs> Google Sheets. <laughs> if you don't if you don't have MS Office, Google Sheets is fine. That's true. I'll so take a want sheet. A, you want a PowerPoint? OK. Yeah. And by nice that, I mean, I will post photos into the Discord while I talk about it. I'm willing to do that. I, I, the That's PowerPoint great. That's great. Yeah, but then we miss out on the transitions and stuff. Oh, mm. Fuck, okay. I'm going to, well, I guess I'll be screen grabbing tonight from fucking <laughs> MVP. <laughs> if if you're going to do it. transitions, can you do star wipes? I like those. <laughs> well, well I'm not going wipes. to be doing transitions. But I will. <laughs> banana wipes. Banana wipes? What would a banana wipe look like? Just banana, like probably. From... Shape of a banana. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I realized that I jumped the gun on this. What is, what are the wipes? What are we even talking? Is that like a transitional effect? <laughs> what are we discussing? I like how much of a yes man you are. You're like, absolutely, we'll get the star wipes in there. <laughs> yeah. What's a star uh, wipe? I have no. <laughs> he's, like, he's, like, he's like making notes from something side. Go, can I tell reminder, you? Google star wipe tonight. <laughs> can, I, can I tell you what I think a star wipe is? Where my brain immediately went? Like a scene transition with stars going from left to right into the next thing. That is what I imagined. Yeah, mostly. Or like, I mean, there's, there's, yeah, yeah, that works. Okay. Oh, uh, I think, I think Gavin may have oh. submitted a GIF. Of, yeah, there of you one? go. There's a GIF of a Star Wars. That's a, okay. that's a bit of a fancy one. I wouldn't, that's a I wouldn't fancy be asking one. for that level, but yeah, usually. It's oh, like, yeah. those. Okay. Yeah. I know what a Star Wipe is then. Yeah. yeah. So what? I think a banana would be like a shit. Yeah. It would be like a banana. It would, it would just it would, it would <laughs> peel, peel into the next scene. Peel into the next scene. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, none of that's happening, but I'll, I'll do my best to try to get photos. You've got a whole 24 hours. Well, you've got a whole at least 18 hours to work on this. I, it would be time. shocking. Gavin, I just learned that the, what F5 does. You think I'm going to fucking do <laughs> banana wipes? I don't even know what's on my keyboard. I'm going to Google banana wipe and see what comes up. Banana wipe. I'm so excited. I got Eric asked a question about mvp2 and i didn't realize it was in our face slack i thought eric just messaged me that and so i gave it a description and then i regretted it because like oh these are spoilers these are key oh. spoilers for the movie that we're going to see tomorrow well, so all that Jeff? shit was a that was a <laughs> i found this <laughs> that is a banana wipe it's a doormat <laughs> it's a doormat banana. with a banana peel that says don't tread on me that's pretty funny andrew have you started uh shopping from the end caps you want to talk about that? Oh, maybe maybe that could be next episode. Yeah, it's a little bit to go into. Maybe next episode we'll go oh. into that. Well, yeah, I can't wait to see how you didn't do it. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it's a little bit to get into. Don't get ahead of yourself. It's a little bit to get into. You got 18 hours before tomorrow morning to go shopping at NCAPS. No, it's, uh, it's a whole thing. Uh, I will say I had a great <laughs> disappointment last night. I'm sitting on a broken chair. I broke my... It finally happened. Did not happen during a recording. <laughs> That's very sad. My chair has been on the verge of breaking for like four months. I uh, I fell over in it <laughs> in the past. <laughs> Back in like February when I was having like the really bad foot issues, I was rolling out of my chair onto my bed so I could just I avoid having to put any pressure on my foot. And I did it one time, but I forgot to raise the armrest, so I just took the whole chair down with me. And it has has been in a bad spot since that point. And did you pop uh, a wheel it, off or something. Uh, no, it's like the my my seat part has turned into an analog stick for the range of movement it allowed. <laughs> so I was like, this is definitely going to break. And I hope it's during the show. It was not. I dropped my phone 
I went to pick it up while staying on the chair, and it just cracked forward. So now my chair is constantly at a forward tilt unless I push back on it. And uh, whenever I get out of my chair, it goes to the highest height setting it can go. It's a great issue. I would like, like to walk your room with a clipboard like a, a house inspector. <laughs> just see, just write down everything that needs to be replaced. There's been, there have been some things. <laughs> there have been some issues, for sure. I had to clean, um, somebody came through recently to check all the smoke alarms. And while I was cleaning things, I noticed in the corner of the ceiling was still partially blue from a time I dropped a Slurpee and just flung it <laughs> everywhere in my room from like five months ago. So I had to get rid of that. I remember that. Yeah, I went on a real run of dropping drinks to the point now where it is, I've never been more scared than when I have to hold two drinks in my hands. If I have one in each hand, there is a genuine deep fear rooted in past trauma. I throw them. They just launch out of my hand. I need one hand to brace for impact because I'm almost certainly going to fall or drop or trip or do something <laughs> if I have the largest size drinks I could possibly have in my hands. <laughs> I'm going to be... I feel like all the times we've hung out in real life in the past, I've never been worried for your safety. But now I'm just going to be <laughs> petrified. Like, I can't believe you never fell in front of us. Well, I guess you uh, fell yeah, through the I chair in front Jeff, of Jeff. Yeah, but. yeah, I fell yeah, through the yeah. chair with Jeff outside. But like, of that. I can't believe I never saw you roll an ankle on a curb or anything. Oh, uh, technically, Jeff has seen that too, but it was in the dark, and I don't think he noticed. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think if I ever just straight up fall. No, there's a time where I was in a room. See, I don't. You're not very observant necessarily, Gavin. Where I was visiting the office, and I was in a room, and <laughs> didn't you know what walked, I was looking out for. <laughs> you walked in. Like, hey, like said to the people in the room, walk through, went to a different room, was there for a little bit, walk back out. I was just looking at you the entire time, waiting for you to like see me. And then I was going to be like, hey, and you just didn't. You just left. You had no idea that I was in that room. Oh, you know what it feels like, huh? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I can relate to that, Jeff. I'm probably just like, oh, I wonder who that is. <laughs> Zero do you think awareness. What are you going to do about this new uh, double drink carrying phobia that you have? Because it sounds to me like we need to do some sort of a drink carrying immersion to obstacle course therapy where we can uh, like recreate your room outside and then run you through drills Ooh. holding two drinks. Try yeah, I don't. <laughs> strengthen I don't, I, your ability and your confidence so that you don't have to worry about this. That's what I do need. You're right. I need to gain my drink confidence back. Yeah, it is at an all time low. It what is, is your, you need carry confidence. What's your ankle integrity at right now, like percentage wise? That's good. I'd say my ankles are 100%. That sounds like marathon talk. Oh, huh, marathon talk. Yeah, you know, for sure. Yeah, you know, those exist. We'll do those. We'll get around to it. When else are you going to be at 100%? That's the thing. I don't want to immediately go back to 0.5 on both. So there's, little, I'm kind of enjoying this stretch of 100 before I put myself back through the ringer. Huh. I, I think that's no way to live life. Yeah? In what way? <laughs> well, you're potentially going to miss out on experiencing a marathon because of fear. You like, Kevin, you like to live your life 0.5 ankles at a time? Like, what are you saying? I'm trying to, if anything, I'm arguing I want to be able to enjoy things by having functioning ankles. You clearly want to do a marathon. You're never going to be able to do it at less than 100%. So yeah. what do you need to start the marathon? I need some more time at 100% is what I need. That's fair. Or you just need to like, drink it in. That, that's yeah. what, that makes sense. Yeah, I just need yeah. to enjoy it a little bit before I crash the plane again. <laughs> There needs to be time. There's reasons why I didn't do the burger challenge back to back to back. I need time. These things take take a toll. They're tough, but I'm excited. One day it will happen. Hopefully soon. Hopefully like in a month. If I get a month of good ankle time, no issues, I'm in. <laughs> a month is enough. <laughs> do, you, do you guys ever watch that show Hard Knocks? Absolutely. Yeah, this season is... A, Gavin, you've probably not seen it. It's an HBO show. No. And each, each season... They follow one of the worst performing NFL teams from the previous season's mm -hmm. spring training. So, like, players trying to make the team, getting cut, rookies coming in, trying to make a name for themselves. And it's just like a docuseries that's just like six episodes. And it's just a, a it's, it's literally just like the team trying to build themselves up and get ready for the season. And this year it's the Detroit Lions. 
because they only <laughs> won three games last year. And uh, the first episode is well, it's the only one that's out. But the first episode literally has the coach sitting in front of all the guys uh, sitting in uh, an air conditioned uh, theater. And he's giving them this pep talk. And he goes, pay attention to how you feel right now. How you feel right now? <laughs> soak it up and enjoy it. This is the best you're going to feel till next March. You're going to get progressively sorer and more injured and, in, and shittier every day from today for the next like 10 months. So just accept it and acknowledge it and move on. But, but soak up today and enjoy today because today is the last day you're going to feel like this. I, that's all that was running through my head the whole time Andrew yes. was talking about being at 100%. And, it's funny because that's <laughs> he just needs more time to s- He needs yeah. more time to soak it in. Yeah, I, I do. I need to soak it in a little bit more. I like that a month was, was the amount, though. Like, that's not what? very long. How long would you give? I was I, trying to if be I wanted to, If I was someone with the ankle problems that you had and you wanted to really enjoy the 100% ankles, mm-hmm. I'd, probably th- I'd probably want a year. A year? Okay, but here's the thing. Mm. If I say a year, I'm going to get killed for that, I feel like. Yeah. There's I no way we're letting him go a year. There's no, no way that that's going to fly. <laughs> you, are, you, are <laughs> set, you are setting him up for failure. <laughs> It's like they did it after a month. Just a month. He's like, all right, time to, <laughs> time to get out there and risk both ankles again. Yeah, I think a month is fair. I will say a month can be a long time. Like, I haven't talked about this, but uh, Emily, uh, w- Emily went out of town to go visit her family, and Millie went to go stay with her mom, and I had eight days just recently completely and totally alone. Uh, it was just me and the dog. I didn't see anybody. I didn't talk. I, 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 I did go to the movies with Jack uh, on a Saturday. <laughs> uh, but for like eight days, pretty much straight, I didn't see or talk to anybody or uh, interact with human beings at all. And that was only a week. And it was at least a month of my life that uh, it, it took. Uh, so a month can be a very, very, a month could feel like a year if you're alone in my house with just a bulldog and no like You family. easily could have reached out for a lovely bike ride or. Well, I can't. He's on. Right he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's on. Yeah, he's on break. No, that's a good. That's a great point. Yeah. I, I'm not it. complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining about it. I needed the time to decompress. Uh, I had just spent a, a pretty hellacious couple of weeks uh, dealing with Millie. Millie had her big jaw surgery, and so we mm-hmm. were, you know, that was like mm. the culmination of like years and years of like preparation and stuff. So I was kind of like needed a week to kind of just like come down. But uh, but yeah, I, c- I guess I could have reached out. <laughs> <laughs> I was here. <laughs> That's I didn't. I'll tell you. I'll be honest with you. For some reason, I thought you weren't. I was like, yeah, Gab won't be around, or Dan will be in town, or something. So I just like, yeah, I just stared at. Could have wrote me a letter. I could have also texted you. I have your. I have your. That's true. There's something I don't know. Around. I'm not complaining. I wasn't saying like, uh. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I found out quickly that a week can feel like a hell of a lot longer than a week. So a month oh, to yeah. Andrew could be like a year. What depending on what he does with it. Yeah. It just yeah. It's the time. There are certain weeks that are extremely long, and other weeks that go by immediately. So I feel like Andrew and myself have hardly been talking. Yeah. Ever since the end of uh, Survive Block Island. Just <laughs> people are going to make a lot of assumptions about that statement. We don't play Halo anymore. We should. I mean, this is episode 117. This is. This is. We should play Halo. <laughs> I've still <laughs> gotten. Celebrate. I've done every weekly challenge since Halo Infinite released. I'm still doing that. So And co op still isn't out. Co-op still isn't out, Forge isn't out yet, but that looks like it's coming out soon, and some of the stuff people have built in it is insane. A lot of people I'm who so wanted, uh, wanted us to try and do <laughs> Halo 2 Lasso without <laughs> dying. <laughs> <laughs> I saw no, I didn't, I didn't think that would ever be done. It's amazing that somebody did it. I've been meaning oh, to is it, has it been done now? Yeah, somebody did it like last week, and it was the person that was the closest. I think it took them like... Eight hours or seven hours, maybe. Even how less. how is that how is that possible? possible? So I guess one of the it's only been done on the original Halo Two Xbox version because there's something with I think like the frame rate that prevents the ability to shoot frequently. Like there's a slower firing rate on the old console, so I don't think anyone's been able to do it on the Master Chief Collection, which has a higher firing rate. Um, but it's a lot of like glitches and jumps and. It's just a guy that like put in a lot of practice ahead of time. Like I think his thing was speed running Halo 2. I could be wrong. I don't know a lot about the person that did it. I just can't yeah. imagine being in the boss fight for like regret where you have to like climb on and punch him in the face and there's elites all underneath you. And then if I die there, I'm back at Cairo Station. I can't get my head around <laughs> that feeling. Yes. I, I can't imagine get beating Cairo Station. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I, a very alone. small percentage even accomplished that. It's an insane, <laughs> it's an insane feat that the person accomplished. It's amazing. Well, congratulations to streamer Jervalin. I think it's Jervalin. Jervalin. Uh, I'm gonna go with well, where where down in Alabama where I'm from, we say Jervalin. <laughs> <laughs> you can say you can be Jervalin all you want, but if you come in, you come into my neck of the woods, you're Jervalin. <laughs> uh, well, that was nice. I, that, was yeah, that was fun. Yeah. yeah, excited to do one more right right now. Oh yeah, we gotta we gotta roll right into the next one right now. Uh, thanks for listening to another episode of the F- Face Podcast. This was uh, this episode uh, is uh, dedicated to Guilty Spark. Obviously, Um, (laughs) that's a Halo reference if you don't know what that is. And uh, oh, you know, one thing we mentioned, I was going to say, tune in, uh, keep keep your your eyes peeled because Does It Do will be coming out at some point on our YouTube channel and on roosterteeth.com. It is not an audio podcast. It is a video show uh, about 10 minutes long. We'll let you know. But in addition to that, I feel like we should say, because I've seen people asking about it and people are going like they haven't mentioned it since they initially talked about it. The animated faces are coming. There, it's dated. They're actually, we have a release date. I don't know if it's been announced. I don't know if I should give that release date because the, these <laughs> things tend to slip. Uh, but we have, uh, we have, there are multiple episodes in the pipeline. We've seen two or three and they're fantastic and they're, they're really, amazing. really awesome. And they've done an amazing job making us look uh, funny and, and like humans, real humans. Uh, and so those will be some of us. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the animated pickle one, the, the the pickles on Gavin's ports. That's one of the episodes. Uh, well, that's one of the stories. Eric in that episode is maybe my favorite thing. <laughs> I cannot wait till that one's done. Uh, anyway, so those will be coming out soon too. Uh, probably I don't know in the next month or so. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And bye. Hey guys, Major League fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. Someone lost their audio. Let the end cap challenge begin. Andrew bends the rules yet again. The boys have to explain to Pan what an end cap is. Jeff can't spell marshmallow. Gavin absolutely destroys his wall. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face. <laughs>